When somebody runs their own business, then you must be willing to deal with failure. Do something out of the norm, at least once a month. Best thing for an being able to listen to what a client is saying and be able to realize what the client needs and sell it to them. Welcome to the Ethel Coffee Startup School with Ethel Coffee. Um, our topic today is validating your business ideas. So here's the thing. You can sit in your room and sit in your house and think, oh, I think I am going to run a business that does A or B. You know, you have a, an idea and then you launch it. Because I've done this before, I'll tell you. And then it doesn't work. Nobody buys from you. Um, nobody wants the product. And then you're wondering, you know, am I meant to be an entrepreneur? This is such a big failure. This is essentially my story because, you know, if you've listened to my story, I left a very nice job in London working in consulting to come and start a business in Ghana. And I didn't really do any validation of my ideas. And I lost all my savings. So all my you know all, all my savings that i had bought into start a business i had i lost all that money because i just hadn't validated business and you you all know somebody who's telling you about their business idea you're just like mm, this thing is not going to work right um and they haven't validated it but they've started it and they're excited about it so today we're trying to ensure that at least you mitigate the risk right so this is this is the whole thing about that and uh, ethel coffee as uh, ethel coffee startup school the problem is for us entrepreneurs uh, for even those those that have just started and those who are thinking about it you're sitting in your office right now or wherever you're sitting listening you're thinking ah, you know i'm struggling i don't know what to do um and this is this is the reason why i have the ethel coffee startup school it's part of it is just from my journey of being an entrepreneur and thinking I mean, I really wish I had some sort of coach, some, some, some person I'd been there before who's done it before that can at least give me, you know, some sort of guidelines. Because sometimes you're stuck and, you know, or you, there are 10 decisions and you don't know which is the right decision. So this is what we're here today for. And the, the aim is that we're going to reach, um, reach at least 10,000 African entrepreneurs. It helps grow and scale 10,000 African entrepreneurs. So... I'm hoping you're one of them. So let's go. How do you validate your business? Um, before I go through those steps, I also want to talk about how to generate the ideas because I've talked to some people and they think, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I don't know what business to do. Now, if you're typically in Africa, there's a lot of buy and sell, right? So you can go to China and go and bring goods and come and sell. That's fine. You don't need to validate that. As long as somebody else is selling it here, and get your distribution right, you can do that. But if you want to build out a service, a consulting business, product manufacturing, um, in order to know what people need, right? So every type of business meets a need, whether you're meeting a need for a business or even the games you play on your phone. Do you know, the, do you know what the, games on your, the, the, the need the games on your, your phone meet? They meet your need uh, to not be bored and then meets your need for competitiveness. Everything meets your need, right? So you've got, to, you've got to solve a problem. So you've got to go out, um, don't spend time by yourself thinking through ideas. Actually go out, talk to people, uh, meet people, move. You know, remember when I talked to you about the first, the first, um, the first week when I said, you know, move out of your, your comfort zone. Go and talk to, if you're a doctor, go and spend time. If your friend is a salesperson, go and spend time in their office. All these things give you an opportunity to see the problems out there and how, um, how you could possibly build a business to solve it. So in order to generate ideas, you've got to go out, meet people, talk to people, you know, be part of conversations, do things that are outside your comfort zone. And you'll be amazed at how many things you see. I mean... There was something on the TV, um, was it on the TV a couple of weeks ago, somebody who was repackaged, um, the, the Ghanaians will know the Sapo, and they are selling it in the US. 
and it's i think it's it's less than a dollar in ghana but it's selling it for 12 dollars in the u.s right so you never know <laughs> go out there see people understand what the need is okay now that you've generated the idea most people have an idea of what they want to do now let's talk about validating the idea the first thing is validate first thing you need to do is to validate the problem like i said before every solution every business is solving a problem solving a problem right so the first thing you've got to and you we've met people like this i somebody was talking to me a while back i've got to remember and they were talking about how their business what they do is they come in and they rearrange your closets so that like that, that thing was women don't want to spend money to buy new clothes so um they they come in and rearrange your closet so that you can do you know if you're if you're maybe used to wearing this top with this skirt they come in and rearrange your closet so that you can um you can sort of see the different things you can wear and, and sort of give you a fresh look and i thought i want to buy new clothes actually not a problem that i have um the, that's a, maybe this you know i want to make more money so i can buy clothes but the pro, there's not a problem that i have that i want not i do not want new clothes every woman i think with a few exceptions wants new clothes everybody i think wants new clothes so craft your problem well it could be that um for instance um let's so, let, let me use a, a really good example so my company adult technology consulting we're an it consulting firm we have one product uh we have one software product which is a customer relationship management product now when we were thinking about that product one of the things that we one of the the, the thoughts that we had one was okay we want to sell it to sales managers one and then the second thing we thought was like look one of the biggest problems sales managers in large companies so we're talking about companies that are making uh revenue of maybe uh two million dollars and above one of their biggest problems is ensuring that their salespeople are meeting targets now one of the we felt that one of the biggest problems for them was they were not able to get the information quickly that maybe the targets were not being met so that they could make changes so for instance instead of being able to instantly know that okay if, if my target for this week is a hundred thousand dollars and I as at Thursday, we have only talked to only talk to people uh, that can bring us twenty thousand dollars. There's a problem, and we need to make a change. So that's a problem that we felt that salespeople had, our sales managers had that had you know. So this is companies that are making upwards of five million dollars a year. Um, this is a problem they had. Uh, the sales managers in those companies that have large com large group of salespeople had. Okay. So what did we do? We wanted to validate the problem. And I'm going to go through a list of questions we asked. These are a list of questions you should go out and ask your target market. So don't sit, again, don't sit in your room and dream up the business idea because it's not, it's not a room that is going to buy it. It's the people out there, the businesses and the human beings out there that are going to buy it, right? So first, the, one of the, the first question we ask is, tell me the last time you try to do x right so it could be for us with the the customer relationship management tool it was tell us the last time you try to try to ensure that your sales you you could manage your sales pipeline or tell us the last time you wanted to make sure that your sales people were going out there and selling to meet the sales uh, your, your sales targets right so the typical sales manager will say oh i do this every week right and relate this to your business so i do this every week um you know I, I i try and track what they are doing who they are selling to their activity so if i have a 20-man sales team i'm trying to track all these 20 sales people um and you ask them but why do you track them again we're going to ask the same question in different ways so that we can get the right answer right so human beings sometimes um, how they answer questions might not be straightforward. So you want to ask the same question about three or four times. So you've asked them, first of all, the first thing we ask is, we framed it in terms of our prob of what we thought their problem was, right? So when was the last time you tried to manage your sales, your, make sure that you could see what your sales team was doing, 
We're like, oh, I do this every Friday. I do this every, you know, every week. And then you ask, but why do you do it? So you want them to validate the problem. It's like, no, I, I always, I make sure that I track my salespeople um, because without that, um, I wouldn't know if we are not making, making the sales target so that I can change strategy. You see, they are now telling you what their problem is. You've asked the question, you framed it, but you've asked another question and they're now telling you, they might be telling you a little bit of what their problem is. Next is, again, a different variation on that question is, what, you are, what are you trying to achieve? Then you'll, and the salesperson might say, I'm trying to achieve my revenue target. Look, I'm the sales manager. If I don't hit my revenue target, they are going to sack me. Or my company is not, or if it's an entrepreneur, if I don't hit my sales targets, then my company is not making enough to, be, to make a profit. Right? So that, again, you are walking them through what their problem is and how they would like to solve the problem. Now, then the question is, how have you tried to improve the way the next question is how have you tried to improve x so how have you tried to improve uh, the way in which you manage your salespeople you know, somebody will, they'll say oh you know maybe every friday i put I, I let all my salespeople put their activities on an excel sheet so they can write oh i talked to 20 customers one from this company one from that company one from that company um this company could bring in maybe 10,000, this company could bring in maybe 20,000. So I, I have them put it all in an activity sheet or an Excel sheet and they bring it to me on Friday. That's, that's, how, I imp that's how I have tried to improve the tracking rather than trying to maybe use emails. I now use an Excel sheet, which I get every Friday. Now, the, and then you ask them again, maybe if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if you can get them to show you the Excel sheet, right? Show me how you do it. How so? Show them. Show you the Excel sheet. Okay. All right. So this is how. And then I put all of it together and I look at all the twenty salespeople's Excel sheets, right? And then I try and figure out. Okay, if my target is a hundred thousand. Okay, right now my my salespeople are only talking to the pipeline we have is about maybe twenty thousand. So it doesn't look like we are going to hit the target, right? Now. You see what we've done here? We've asked enough questions and we've asked them to show us that we're validating whether actually this is a need. Now, the salesperson has told us that actually this is a problem that we might have. This is a problem that we have. Um, that I, I have, you know, this large number of salespeople and I get them all to send Excel sheets and it's, you know, such a hassle managing it. So we are validating, okay. okay we think that this problem that we think that we can solve for this company, um, we think that, that it's a valid problem. Okay, then the next question you ask, which is the most, that, which is the one of the most important questions. Are you already paying for a solution to solve your problem? It's like, oh, we have, you know, the salesperson can say, oh, we have Excel um, and we pay license for Excel. So that's what we're doing. So what have you done in this conversation? And usually I would say to you, talk to about 10 or 15 people. If, even if it is you're building for, you know, if you're not building for a business and you're building for a typical, just a person, go and talk to 10 or 15 people and just try and get them to, rather than say, which is what most entrepreneurs do, they say, okay, I have the solution. I have a piece of software that allows you to, to track all your sales processes and all your sales activities so at every instance you can tell what your sales people are doing and then the person say mm, it looks nice right that's what most entrepreneurs would do rather than the problem i want to solve is i want to enable sales you know i want to enable sales people inst sales managers instantly get access to the sales activities of their team so they can immediately tell if they you know if their sales people are not making targets and change strategy so he can meet targets do you see do you see the difference in thinking or asking questions because i don't know which country you're in but in some countries honestly people are very nice if you if you tell them, oh do you think it's a good idea they'll say yes it's a good idea and then when it comes to buying they won't buy right so validate the problem 
So let me walk through the questions again. One, can you tell me the last time you did X? So put X with the problem you are trying to solve. What, um, why, what is the reason you do X? Again, the problem you are trying to solve. What are you trying to achieve by doing X? Actually, let me read from here. This is much better. Um, how often, yeah, what are your reasons for doing X? This is the activity that the problem solves. How often do you do it? What are you trying to achieve or get done by doing that activity? Can you describe step by step how you do the activity? Or can you show me how you do the activity? What happens before and after you experience the problem? So I'm going through an in-depth set of questions, right? What don't you like about how you solve the problem? So now that the person says, I use an Excel sheet, what don't you like about using the Excel sheet? So, oh, I have to put, I, it's 20 people. I have to take all those 20 people and put it, and put it together in one Excel sheet. Okay. Um, and then the 10th question, what, what would, are you already paying for a solution to your problem? Or what would you pay to have this problem tackled for you? Somebody says, ah, it's not a big problem for me. So maybe five, $5, right? Somebody says, oh, this is a huge thing for me. I mean, if I don't meet my sales targets, um, if I don't meet my sales targets, I might lose my job. So, you know, it's worth $100,000, right? You've got to get the person to tell you how much it's worth to them. Because let me tell you something. Uh, sometimes when people, when people manufacture, especially the manufacturing industry, they say, okay, this is my cost of manufacturing. Then they put, this is my markup cost. So they say my, my cost of manufacturing is $2. And then um, my markup is maybe I put another one dollar fifty, so I'm selling at three 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 dollars fifty. But whatever it is you're selling is of so much value to the customer. The customer might even be willing to pay for fifty dollars. I'm a proponent of sell at the value, the value of the product to the customer versus um, cost of production plus you know increase, right? So. If the value of what you are selling is $50 or $100 or $10,000 to that client and your, your cost of manufacturing or your cost of doing business is $10, sell it for $100. Honestly, I'm a strong proponent of that. Sell based on value. Right, so we now have a list of questions on how to validate the problem. The next thing, which is a little bit tricky, is validating the customer. So normally, we have a target customer in mind, right? So um, you think, oh, you know, I want to sell, uh, I want to sell, a, uh, I, I want to start a car dealership and I want to sell Hondas, right? And in my mind, my target, my target market for the, pe the kind of person that buys Honda is somebody that has left school, um, that has just left school, has gotten his first job, and um, and wants to drive a car. So I'm, I'm, I'm. That's where I'm going to target. Those are the people I'm going to target. And then you go out and you find out that the people that have left school don't have enough money to buy Hondas, so they are not interested in buying a Honda, right? So maybe you might even do your marketing towards, you know, you you go you go and do your marketing at. Um, maybe graduation ceremonies, right? Because you are thinking that's your target market. And then you find out that actually, the people who, the people who you are targeting cannot afford to or do not want your product, right? So validate yeah, the customer. So be very specific in your mind. Be very, very specific about which your demographic, you see the demographic is, right? So you see how I described it right now. My target market is students that are just graduated and in their first job. Be very clear, right? Even if you're making it up, at least be very clear in your mind. And then go and find out where those people are congregated. So where do, if, I don't know, if you're selling a baby product, right? So then it's, uh, where, where, are, where, where do people who buy baby products congregate? It might be the, you know, maternal health, whatever, at the, the, the clinic, 
or it might be there might be some events that you know like parenting events those are where they are now go and ask them right so valid your in, in you have to validate that customer in order to ask them the, the, if, the, if the problem really exists for them. So go and find those customers and talk to them, right? Be very, very clear. I'm, I want to sell to, you know, 45-year-old men that work in insurance. That's fine. I'm sure that the, 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 the insurance agency in your country has an insurance event you can attend and talk to 45 year old men at insurance be very clear of who to sell don't look don't say that i sell to everybody even facebook even facebook started by being specific about their target market facebook was for students in ivy league universities that's how they started right so they started out at harvard stanford and they were and they were using it and guess what? That generation left school, right? And then they expanded as more universities wanted to get. That generation left school, started working, and I don't know how old Facebook is now. And they are now they Facebook, for instance, have, has right now is Facebook is getting Facebook is getting older. The younger generation, um, the 15 year olds don't necessarily like Facebook, and they want to do Snapchat and Instagram, right? But that's a problem Facebook needs to solve because they, they targeted us, my generation, actually, where we were the, the, yeah, the Facebook generation. They targeted my generation and we've grown and we're now, you know, running companies and doing this. So there's an older demographic on, on Facebook. Be very, very clear who your demographic is. Go and find them and talk to them. Validate that. Um, because if you find out that actually... It might be that you have a good demographic you can sell to, but the problem you have is not the problem that they want solved. So you can tweak the problem, right? And then sell them something different. Or that you have a problem that's a valid problem, but your demographic or your, your, your target market is wrong. And then you have to change the target market. But all these things so that you won't have spent money investing in marketing, building a product, and then nobody wants to buy it. All this is to prevent you from getting to that point where you have a product, but nobody wants to buy it. Okay. So if we are going with the analogy of the, the, sales, um, the, the sales team, um, then it would be where would I, because I'm selling to sales managers, where would I go? I would talk to, I would go to, um, there's a lot of tr people that train sales teams and sales managers. So I would go and talk to them and say, oh, you know, I would love to come in to one of your sales, sales training events and talk to the sales managers there to see if, you know, this thing that I want to sell is a valid product. You see, I'm going to find the people that I want to sell to immediately and then talking to them and validating. So we validated the problem and then we're validating the customer. Most of the time you do both things at the same time because you're, I, I ask that you do a lot of observation and you do a lot of asking questions because the thing is sometimes a human being will answer a question a certain way but will behave a different way for example when when they ask people would you put money aside for your pension most people say yes i want to put money aside for pension but a lot of people don't do it <laughs> right so how human beings behave versus what they say those are two different things so you should do both. You should observe their behavior, which is why there's a question about show me how you do it, right? And then versus, you know, just tell me how I want. A lot of people will tell you, I want to exercise, but they don't go to the gym, right? So be, be very clear on observe, but also ask questions. And then the third thing is validating your distribution. So here's, here's the thing that I think I have learned just over my time of running adult technology consulting, women in tech Africa and all these other things. I, you know, I do, innov I've done, I do innovation consulting for businesses. So like uh, companies like uh, well, Afri the African Women's Development Fund, MTN, I've done innovation consulting for them. Um, and I'm in um, Cote d'Ivoire in about three weeks doing innovation consulting for the CTA. One of the things that I've learned is if you have a good product, 
but you can't get it in front of the customer. You know what? Forget it. Then you're, you're, you're going to fail in business. You have a great product that solves a great need, but it's not in front of the customer. So you might, if you're doing, and I go back to manufacturing, if you are selling, um, I don't know, a yogurt or a drink, that is amazing, the best thing ever, right? But it's not in, in retail shops or it's not in a place where people can find it to buy, then, you know, you're not going to make money. So the third thing, and next week we'll, we'll continue, next, next week we'll talk about validating the solution and validating pricing. Validating the solution and validating pricing. But this week we'll, we'll, we'll just end at uh, validating distribution. Um, how, how do your customers want to be reached? That's the question you have to answer when, when you're meeting your distribution. And before I forget, for those, um, for those that need reminder, at the end, if you're listening intently, I'm going to give away the HBR uh, Harvard Business Review book on communication. Um, part of the whole thing is, again, you're asking a lot of questions, so how do you communicate with your team, clients, customers, uh, distributors, partners, learn about communication. Um, remember also, again, if you know somebody that wants, really, really, really needs to hear what I'm talking about today, um, share it on their timeline, uh, just tag them in the comments so that they can, they can watch it uh, to the end of the video. Okay, so how will your customers want to buy your product? How will they want to buy that product? Some people, they don't really think about that because they think, oh, if I build it, they will come. I don't know that that is necessarily true. Um, if you have a nice product and it sits in your house or sits in your room, and nobody can find it, guess what? You're not going to make a sale. Um, some people will, be, will distribute it in a, retail, uh, in a retail store, right? So they might build their own retail store or they might sell to bigger retailers. That's, that's a distribution channel. Or is my product, can my product come bundled? Can I partner with someone else and sell it in a bundle? So, um, you know, I talked to you about the, the, uh, the customer relationship management software that my company sells. One of the things we talked, we talked about when we were, um, were actually validating the product was the first way we can do it, we can have our own salespeople go and sell it. Or there are, um, there are companies that, that have cloud hosting, for anybody cloud hosting services, and they, they sometimes resell software systems as part of their cloud hosting so they might be selling like a hosting to a company and they might say oh if you're if you're doing you know if we're selling you internet or we're selling you cloud hosting we can put this uh, um, customer relation management software and bundle it and sell it to you at cost right so we did go and talk to isps and companies like that that could bundle our customer relationship management uh, system resell it to them, resell it to their current customers and split the profits. Again, it means that if, if that's how I was going to sell it, it means that I don't need to necessarily hire salespeople. All I need is to go and talk to ISPs. That is one way to distribute a product, right? One way to distribute the product. Or it could be, um, again, I'm going back to... Uh, uh, is the product downloadable? If I'm selling maybe, I don't know, a training course, can I sell it as an e-training course, right? So it's downloadable or you can do it online versus um, can I, am I rather going to do a workshop and have people in a physical place? How are you going to deliver and distribute your, your service, your product, your sales? Something you have to think about. You have to ask yourself the kind of customers that you're targeting are they willing, for instance, if you're selling a training course, are they willing to come and be in one place and be physically trained or they're really busy professionals and they would rather download it uh, and learn on their own? Or would you rather, I don't do, I don't know, mobile-based learning, so you build a mobile app and they can do it on their own. 
how are you going to distribute that's important this is something that you have to go away and validate you've got to talk to your customers and ask them you've got to ask them how which way is the most convenient for you i mean think about the telecom companies now what would have happened if if you have to buy your your credit and your top up for of your you know for your phone if you always had to find a retail shop like a, a Vodafone or an MTN or a Vodacom or a Telcom uh, a retail shop and buy it. If that's what you had to do every time, you probably buy less. But they have distributors, right? So how have they sorted out their problem? They have distributors. And those distributors sell to tabletops. And they also have another channel, which is online. So you can also go and top up online, right? So instead of finding, say... A, a, a Vodafone shop and going to buy the top up, you can now buy it from the woman that sells oranges in front of your house. Distribution. They solve the distribution problem. So you have distributors who then resell at a certain cost to the, the, the woman that sells oranges in front of your house so that you have quick access to it. Distribution. So you've got to ask yourself, what's the simplest and easiest way for people to get your product easiest simplest way for people to get your product and validate that are you going to use a wholesaler right to so somebody you, you sell it to somebody who sells it to smaller people are you going to use a retailer are you going to do a partner is it going to be part of a product are you going to sell it directly some people are going to say no we are an online channel i'm just going to sell from online so or I sell by WhatsApp, so this is my phone number, WhatsApp me, I sell to you. That is fine, but you've got to validate it. If you are selling to people in the village and you are thinking WhatsApp, then you know that your distribution is going to fail, right? So there we go. So this week we've dealt with validating your business. Uh, the problem is usually I have a timer, so I don't have a timer, so I don't know if I've gone over the 30 minutes, but we'll wrap up soon. Um, the first part of, the, of, of this is we're validating your business idea before you even go out and build something, right? Go out and buy something, put money, validating if the business is going to be sold. Now, there's a caveat to what I'm saying. So not, not all businesses, um, the steps that I've described, not all businesses, it doesn't work for all businesses. So, for instance, if you're creating a new category of business, so you're creating a new industry. So, for instance, before um, the, the iPhone came out, right, iPhone created the industry. Right? They created the whole app industry. They are the ones that started, you know, we have a phone, a developer can build a mobile app, put it in a Play Store, you can uh, you know, uh, you put it in this, a store and you can download. They created that industry. If you're creating a new industry, most people don't understand or know it. So, it's, so you can't use that path, right? Most of us are already working in an existing industry. I work in technology. I work in leadership. So for those ones, if, if that's an industry that's pre-existing, the questions that I'm asking you to ask, those are easy. If you're creating a new industry, this is a different, that is very, very different and um, it takes more of a, a leap of faith. Um, but I think that honestly, most of our businesses sit within some, uh, some industry. And so this works for maybe 80, 90% of the population. It is, we're all in some sort of industry. It is just that the innovation is a little different. So validate your problem, validate your customer, validate your distribution, channels and next week we'll talk about validating the solution validating the pricing um uh, validating the solution and validating the pricing and we'll add more a little a little bit about it because um now that you know what the problem is maybe your solution doesn't necessarily solve the problem well right or that you know you might price something really high and the kind of customer you're trying to target doesn't um doesn't want to spend that much on the solution so we'll talk about that next week uh, my action point for you this week is take time take time out 
walk out of the building, go to a, a place where you think that your target customers are, and strike up a conversation. I, and I want, I'm going to ask you to tell me your stories next week when we come back. Strike up a conversation and t try and talk to at least five people. And tell them, don't tell them about your solution. Don't say, I built this business that does this and this and this. Actually try and ask them about the pain points you're trying to solve, the problem you're trying to solve. Use that list of questions that I gave you. And, you know, as you go, just slip those questions in um, and see if really the people that you're targeting are the people, the, the problem that you want to solve, are, it's a problem that really people have. So, it's over. <laughs> I hope you learned a lot from it. And thank you for joining us on the Ethel Coffee Startup School. Selling to